In 2021, reports came out about CEOs making 351 times more money than the average worker. People were not happy. This also came after news broke up that the top 1% made billions during the pandemic while the rest of the world suffered. One could argue that billionaires shouldn't exist in the first place. No one deserves to have that much money. So, how exactly did we get here? Will the rich get richer forever? Welcome to Alux. To understand the wage disparity, we first gotta look at how it all started. And for that, we need to go back to the beginning. Ladies and gentlemen, we take pride in presenting Back in the 80s, two major political Ronald leaders Reagan. spearheaded neoliberalism in the modern era. In the USA, it was President Ronald Reagan. In the UK, it was Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. Now, neoliberalism is just a fancy word to describe market-oriented reform policies, like the privatization of the public sector and eliminating price controls, both of which Thatcher and Reagan were major supporters of, solidifying free market capitalism in both nations. What they didn't support, though, was labor unions, which in effect left organizations less able to advocate for their workers. This new wave of neoliberalist policies paved the way for a new model for CEO compensation. One that involves paying the top dog their fixed salary, but also asset-based rewards, aka stocks. But why pay them so much? Next, big time CEOs and the big paychecks. To put it simply, the CEO is the most important person driving a company's success, so they're paid according to how financially successful the company is. In addition to that, many major corporations rely on what's called compensation committees to determine a CEO's salary. Now, these committees are typically composed of executives and board members from other companies who meet once a year to talk shop. But how do they decide what a CEO is worth? Well, aside from the obvious experience level and past performance factors, the compensation committee will also use benchmarking to compare their CEO's wages to that of others in the same position at similar companies. And to remain competitive, this usually leads to steady increases year over year. Essentially, they justify each other's salary. Now, on top of that fixed annual salary, members of the executive are offered incentives on three different levels. So we've got the short, medium, and long term. Now, short term incentives are typically paid out in cash and are performance based. You know, the CEO increases a company's profit margin, they get a bonus. Simple enough. The medium term incentives are more often connected to the CEO being able to deliver on a company's strategic goals. So company performance, not personal performance. Then finally you have the long term incentives where you can unlock options to buy stock in the company, usually at a major discount, which in effect aligns the goals of the CEO with that of the shareholder. Executives do well, the company does well, the stock does well, everyone benefits and keeps their job. So, are they worth it? You need to pay them more because you need to attract talent, right? Well, if you ask the average employee, they'd tell you the answer is no. As we've already said, a CEO is the most important person driving a company's success, right? And their success ultimately makes the company more valuable, allowing them to create more jobs and generate more value for society as a whole. Look, when asked why it's normal for him to be worth $200 billion, Jeff Bezos quipped that people don't see the $850 billion value generated for shareholders along the way, and I mean, he's not kidding. It's easy to hate on Jeffrey Jeffrey Bezos when you ignore the fact that over a third of the world's internet activity is hosted by Amazon Web Services. That's some major value he's generated for society. When it comes to Fortune 500 companies, greater success for the CEO ultimately means greater success for the company. You know, it's high value work that comes with high value pay. But here's where it gets tricky. Those same Fortune 500 companies, they end up being faced with a social sciences game theory called the prisoner's dilemma. So the theory goes like this. The police arrest two suspects and interrogate them in separate rooms. So each of them have two options, right? Confess and implicate the other or stay silent. If one confesses, but the other stays silent, the confessor, well, they'll get better treatment for cooperating while the silent suspect, they get a harsher penalty for holding out. 
Now, the best strategy for either of them is to confess, right? But if they both confess, neither of them is any better off than if they had both remained silent. See, I told you it was a dilemma. So how does this apply to our CEO pay scale? Well, according to Sandy Pepper, who is an executive pay expert and professor of management and practice at the London School of Economics, corporations would pay their CEOs less if everybody else followed suit. But, you know, nobody wants to go first. He reiterates the idea that companies keep their executive salaries high to stay competitive with other corporations and essentially attract top performers to their organization through those lucrative multi-level compensation packages we talked about earlier. So with this model in play, corporations keep CEO salaries high straight across the board. But how long will this model last? Well, it's a hard one to say for sure, but one thing is certain. More people are paying attention to this topic than ever before. For example, in November 2020, voters in San Francisco, very close to Silicon Valley and all its corporations, approved Proposition L, which imposes an additional tax on businesses in the city whose highest paid executive makes in excess of 100 times the median salary of its employees. So this proposition, which was meant to give economic incentive to reduce the wage gap, passed with 65% voter support and comes into effect January 1st 2022. So what's our take on the matter? Well, at Alux, we fully believe the market rewards those who create value. CEOs deserve to be paid as much as they are because, well, at the end of the day, they're the ones making the hardest and most stressful decisions. Now, if like Warren Buffett, you've proven yourself time and time again to make smart moves and wise decisions generating value for your company and the whole world, well, then you deserve the extra cheddar because CEOs are paid on their performance, not on deliverables. You know, a great CEO brings leverage with them because of their skills and experience. They're multipliers, and that's the kind of thing the eat the rich crowd seems to misunderstand, especially considering the value they bring globally. You know, critics had a lot to say about Elon Musk's Starlink program, but internet access is basically a human right by this point, and he's providing that to people who've never had it before. Which, think about it, it means more people will have a genuine shot at educating themselves and moving up in the world. I mean, he also got clean water to Flint, Michigan when the US government wouldn't, so there's that too. Between this and the SpaceX mission to Mars, he's quite literally pushing humanity forward. And that should really be the goal of any CEO. So if you have your sights set on the executive level, our advice is to focus on building value, creating better lives for all, and as we just said about Elon, push humanity forward.